And good afternoon, everybody. Uh, appreciate you being here. My name is Brian Hayes, and I'm just here to welcome you guys to the North Sales First uh, J24 webinar. Um, we're really excited to have three of the top J24 champions from both the US and Europe joining us today. And we're just going to wait just a few minutes here uh, to let everybody come out of the waiting room and join us here in the webinar meeting room. So just going to take a few minutes here to get everything queued up. Um, usually folks kind of join in right at the four o'clock time. And we just give them a few minutes to get settled in, kind of get used to the Zoom thing and uh, make sure our team is all set to go. Uh, kind of excited for this, uh, this webinar. We have over 500 people have registered for it from all over the globe. Uh, at last count, as of a few minutes ago, over 30 countries are uh, on board. So we appreciate everybody from all over the world joining in this afternoon. Uh, we have a lot of great things for our team to talk to you about today. Uh, we're trying to keep these webinars about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. So our team's been working really hard to kind of keep a very tight agenda for all the stuff they have to cover. So uh, again, just another moment or two as we get the rest of the, rest of the folks out of the waiting room and into uh, our meeting room. Uh, and as you guys see here up on the screen, uh, it's our reminder to make sure that you uh, don't forget to join the class and support the class by renewing your membership, www.j24class.org. Uh, obviously, uh, we're going to be missing a few events this year as we kind of get through this cycle of what's going on around the world uh, with the global pandemic. And obviously, the class more than ever needs your help and your support. So uh, again, uh, maybe... Maybe not right now, but right after this webinar is over, you can click on over to j24class.org and remember to renew your membership and uh, maybe a little extra support for the class. The class, uh, Strong Class Association, uh, does a lot of things for keeping the value of the boat and keeping great competitive events for, for everybody sailing J24s. So uh, again, um, we're going to kind of get things kicked off. The first thing I want to do is uh, welcome our today's moderator. And uh, he's a three-time North American champion, a three-time European champion, and a six-time U.S. national champion. And uh, if that's not enough information to you figure out who this is, it's Mike Ingham. And Mike, I just want to make sure you're on the line with us. Hi, Brian. Thanks for the intro. I'm here. Great. Well, again, Mike, I uh, appreciate you being here and kind of moderating these guys through. I, I, we've been through a bunch of practice sessions and, um, boy, they need all the help they can get. So uh, you're the right guy to drive them through the bus here. And uh, anyway, I'm going to kind of turn this over to you and uh, introduce our team for today. Good luck and have a lot of fun, guys. Hey, thanks, Brian. And welcome, everybody. Uh, with us today is uh, Will uh -huh. Wells and a two-time world champ. Uh, say hi, Will. Hey everyone, thanks for coming. And uh, Andre Casale, who's also a two-time champ, one is driver and one is tactician. And he's joining us all the way from Italy. Italy, uh, Andre, are you there? Yeah, I can hear you. Ciao, ciao everybody, glad to be here. Great, great to have you and great to be here. So um, anyway, we're gonna kick this off today. And uh, Here's our agenda. We're going to talk about heavy air J24 sailing. And uh, we're going to concentrate on upwind. Uh, we're going to kick it off with blade versus Jenny decision, that tough decision. Uh, how important it is to balance the boat, and, and more importantly, um, how we're supposed to do that. It's a tricky job on the, on the J24. Uh, we're going to walk through the Genoa, the blade, and then we're going to take that really extreme condition and when it's just super windy and wavy. 25, 30 knots and big waves. So uh, let's kick this off. And oh, and by the way, we're going to have some follow on seminars with other conditions and downwind and all that. So uh, please, please ask lots of questions. Try to focus on the subject on hand, which is heavy air upwind. But um, and if you ask another question off topic, we also can reach you offline, send you an email or something like that. So please hold on to those questions for future seminars and here we go we'll start off with that tricky decision blade versus genoa and uh will how do you make that decision how do you make that call and what do you do to set up for the day yeah thanks mike 
You can see um, <clears throat> that uh, this nice picture of the J-24 Worlds in Garda a couple years ago. About half the fleet thought the Genoa was the call and the other half thought the Blade was the call. And uh, it really comes down to, you know, every, every boat, every team, every crew is a little different. And, uh, you know, the big thing is choosing the sail that you're most comfortable with and you think you can control the boat with the best. So, you know, for our team, we, um, you know, we, we'll talk about the, you know, whether we're going to do use the blade or the general, even the night before when we're looking at the, the weather report. Um, and then certainly uh, the next morning over breakfast, we'll, we'll talk about it again and right up to when we're getting ready to leave the dock. And, uh, you know, if it's look, if the report's looking uh, windy, like, it's going to build as the day goes on. We'd hank on the Genoa, and then we, before we left the dock, we'd pull the jib out, and either on the dock if there's room, or or on the bow, or, or the boat someplace, uh, do a luff flake. So flake the sail up, the, up uh, the the blade jib, and uh, stack the luffs. So all the hanks are on top of each other. Make sure the 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 sheets are on it, tie it all up nice and tight, and uh, and stow it down below. Um, we'll make sure we know where the jib blocks are as well. And, uh, you know, I typically don't like putting them on early because uh, with the, the, the block there without a line running through it, it tends to grab tails and things like that. But, uh, you know, it really comes down to, um, you know, personal preference. And with the, with the blade, um, you know, I think the, the bottom end you can sail the blade with is 16 and that'd be pretty flat water. Um, and then the, the, at the other end with the top end of the Genoa, it's probably, you know, 20, 22 uh, and, and big waves. So that would be kind of the range that we would, we would look at uh, using each sail. And I'm just thinking back to the, the midwinters in uh, Miami a couple of weeks ago. Probably if, if some of you were there, it might be the last time we all sailed together. But, uh, um, you know, that was an interesting venue. It's pretty small course area, pretty short track, so not very long legs. And uh, it was really shifty flat water. And a lot of the teams ended up going to the blade early because of the flat water and the shifty winds. Um, you know, with the Genoa at the upper end, every tack you make, you, you, you end up going a little sideways and you lose a lot of boat length. So having the jib up um, in a shifty flat water venue uh, just helps you, you know, maneuver the boat a lot easier, a lot faster as so you can tack on every shift. And, and it was definitely the call in, in uh, Melbourne a couple, couple weeks ago. Yeah. Hey, Andrea, this is, you know, the blue, beautiful Garda here. And um, half the boats have blades, half the boats have jennies. And, um, you know, on, on this day when you were racing, what were kind of some of the things that went through your head before you make that decision? Well, I do agree. I do agree with Will that um, the crossover, the range where you should uh, take a decision between the two sails, is between 16 and 19 knots. So that's when you have the question point. And I think uh, the decision are taken depending from yeah from the sea state. If it's a uh, flat water or uh, heavy sea. Also, you should consider if you can guess the number of tasks you're doing, uh, how many Hey, uh, I, I had to mute Andrea there. He was breaking up a little bit. Um, so I think what he was saying was that, uh, we thought I heard he was saying was that uh, he also takes into consideration, you know, how on top of how experienced his crew is. So if his team is, um, you know, a little bit newer and not used to working together, they might go to the jib a little earlier. So it looks like your, uh, your video is back on, Andrea. I'm going to go back to you. Andrea? He's still yeah. muted. Yeah. Yep, go ahead. Sure. Can you, for sure, yep. um, experience of the crew you're sailing is also a key factor if you want to decide uh, what sails to hoist between the two. So, 
So uh, we know that packing a genoa, it's, um, uh, it's pretty difficult. You need uh, a very good trimmer and a good, very good bowman. They need to do the proper thing, seize the sheet, and the bowman has to move around the gym, around the mask. So you need a specific technique. So when I'm confident uh, with my crew, when we all are uh, pretty well trained and we are um, experienced, uh, then I push uh, the, the gym at the upper end of the range. Uh, otherwise, it's wiser to go early on the gym because it's a smaller sale and it's easier to, to test. Yeah, here in Garda, um, you know, the, the, the venue was kind of narrow, and before we got to the weather mark, we'd hit the rocks on the right there. So we had to do a lot of short tacking up the rocks. So that's a consideration too, right? Like going to the blade for that, to do, do that short tacking along the shore was kind of a winning move here too. I do remember this day, and, uh, you know, it was interesting. About half people had blades and half people had Genoas. And, um, you know, if I remember right, about half the people at the top mark in the top group were blades and half were Genoas. So I think at some point you just got to pick one and you got to learn how to sail it super well. And, and um, with that, we'll transition to kind of balancing the boat because whichever one you pick, that is really the key to, to teaming, the, teaming the beast in this J24. It's a tough boat to sail in a breeze either sail. So uh, we're going to talk a bit here about, you know, how best to trim and how to make a boat tail flat, but um, I think the first thing I sort of wanted to talk about here a little bit was that, you know, really when we, we always talk about sailing flat, and it really isn't flat. This is a nice amount of heel. This also is Garda in the, uh, the afternoon breeze and um, kind of a little bit puffy, but the idea was to kind of sail fairly flat. Um, but to me, flat means, you know, maybe five degrees or something like that. I'm not sure what the number is, but we're always talking really, really hard to keep that neutral helm. And that's how we know if we have the right flatness. And um, when I'm looking at this video, that's you know, exactly where we are. We have the, the tiller pretty much in the middle. We have the, the boom down a little bit, the traps down to the middle. And um, we have a little bit of twist in the main because it's a little bit of chop. And uh, we're trying really, really hard to focus on sailing really flat. Uh, Will, you got anything to add to that? Yeah, no, I think the, you know, keeping the boat flat is the key, um, especially with the J24 and uh, any, anything you can do uh, through steering or the sheets, uh, crew weight, hiking hard, um, you know, keeping the boat flat is the, is the key. So looking at here to the leeward side, um, if you look at the main, it's you can see how twisted it is up here, up top, and also it's um, you know it's very flat up top, and that's because we have the rig on pretty tough, pretty tight. Probably have kicked the mast bug forward a little bit and tightened the shrouds, done everything we can to depower the rig, and that allows us to put the back stay on really hard and bending the top of the mast and really flattening the sail. So, Andrea, what else do you see here that's uh, interesting to talk about? Well, it's, um, it's a typical day in Garda Lake. It's, it's, it's windy. It's definitely windy, but it's flat uh, water. It's, um, it's just choppy. And, um, yeah, for sure, the key in these days on a J24 is uh, to say flat, 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 super flat. Uh, I was teaming up with uh, Will Welsh a uh, couple of years ago at the Wards. I was on the rail, and I think that uh, the Wards, I was uh, shouting the most for him uh, while steering was flat, 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 keep the boat flat. So healing, uh, keep the boat, the J24 flat up with its uh, key fat it's, uh, it's an old boat. And compare with the latest design, uh, compare with uh, these days' boats, doesn't need the, the standard 20, 25 degrees uh, keeling. Uh, so we are generally for sales, and we have to bear in mind that if you want to go fast in uh, rough water, 
with every wind, you have to keep uh, that boat flat. And I'm the kind of guy that I really like uh, to steer the boat a lot. I like to move the rudder in order to keep the boat flat. I like to push the rudder and and I use a lot of the rudder, but I, I know that, uh, Will, you don't uh, have my same style. You are more like a steady helmsman. Well, well, first, I, I don't remember you yelling at me to keep the boat flat in Garda. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, we might have a little different style. Um, you know, I go back to when I was a little kid and my dad um, and my uncle really, you know, teaching me to, you know, steer a, a sailboat. And, you know, they always said, you know, keep the, the tiller straight, steer when you have to and when it means something. So. I really go, I still do that today. I try to keep the, the helm lock, you know, down and straight. And in the J24, you, you end up pushing the helm a lot to keep the boat uh, flat, especially in flat water. And, uh, you know, I just like to keep the, you know, the, the tiller locked in um, and I steer through the sails um, by, by easing the sails. And on the onset of the puff, I'll ease the main a little bit and I'll push the helm and uh, you know, really try not to steer unless I have to. You know, I think with that, it's super important not to, to try to keep that constant heel too. You know, it's hard in a puff, like you can see it's really puffy here and it's not perfectly flat. You know, I'm steering here and I would have, you know, really liked to have kept it just a little more of that constant heel. I think swinging the keel through the water is just really slow. You lose flow over the keel, so. You know, I think, um, you know, listening to these two guys and, you know, I, I do the same thing. I'm always trying to debate whether I'm supposed to steer up in a puff and down the law or am I supposed to use the sails and we're always playing around with those subtleties. Um, but no matter what we do, we, we have to find a way to keep it pretty flat. Um, and usually it's some combination. And, uh, and that's true, of course, for the Genoa too. And uh, so here's a picture a little closer up behind with the Jenna, we're going to talk a little bit more about some controls and everything else here. So, Will, this is you guys sailing upwind, high end of the Genoa. You look super balanced. You have that nice, whatever, five degrees of heel. Um, tell us, tell us what you're thinking right here. Yeah, no, the <clears throat> the setup looks pretty nice. Um, tiller's pretty straight. It looks like I'm I'm easing the main a little bit and pushing the helm just a little bit to to pinch up to help keep the boat flat. So doing a little bit with the, the main and a little bit through steering. I, I'd say the, the trim looks good. That's probably the most I'd want to be healed. I find that, uh, you know, in the sea state, uh, when, it's, when it's a little flatter, you can, you can take care of keeping the boat flat by pinching quite a bit. And when the waves start to build, you, end, you can't do it as long as, as often. So uh, but the pinching that is. So you end up having to sail a little more ease with the sheets, a little more bow down. And I think that that, you know, that angle is probably about right, about, you know, five to eight degrees probably is what right. we're Right, and you got your but, travel up too, right? A little bit too, right? Yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, my rule with the, with the traveler and the, and with the, while the Genoa is up is I never ease it down uh, below one car length up from the center of the track. And the reasoning there is if you, if you lower it to the center or lower, you're just closing the slot uh, between the main and the Genoa too much. So that's my rule of thumb, you know, light air, which we're not talking about really, I'm all the way up. And then, um, you know, once everyone starts hiking and I start thinking about pulling on backstay, I'll slide it down to all the, you know, halfway between all the way up and the center. And then uh, once I'm overpowered, I, I put the, the, the traveler down to that setting. This looks a little higher than, than a car length up. And uh, that's probably primarily because um, I remember this day, I was in Newport uh, a couple of years ago, we we're doing some two boat stuff, looking at sails and things. And, um, you know, the sea breeze was just coming on and uh, there were some pretty big lulls and the waves were just starting to build. And, uh, I like the traveler up a little bit um, so I can trim the gen a little harder and, um, you know, just keep a little bite on the, on, on the helm and the, through the lulls, basically. 
Yeah, I'm looking at this picture here, and I see these overbend wrinkles and a nice tight uh, backstay. And, and to me, these overbend wrinkles, some drawing on here right now, they really tell us a lot about the backstay. And, and you know, to me, you're, you're putting on nice and tight. This is the perfect amount. Any more, and these distortion wrinkles would be too much. Uh, maybe I put a little Cunningham on. What do you think, yeah. Will? Yeah, for sure. I mean, looking at this picture a couple, the last couple of days, I would, uh, and I, you know, knowing me, I was probably thinking about that sailing up wind. But uh, yeah, that would a little cunning, Cunningham on would tell the real story there. And obviously, we can't see further up in the shot, so we can't really see if we're getting inversion wrinkles um, all the way up to from the clue to the spreader. But uh, yeah, the, the little Cunningham on would would tell the real story. And you know, it looks it looks good. The crew's hiking really hard, and we're, we're max backstay, and the lured shrouds don't look. Um, that loose um, but uh, you know it's possible that we should be thinking about going up one step. Andrea what do you um, what do you see here Andrea? Well I have to say that <clears throat> first of all I like uh, Will Welsh sitting in style with his uh, white fancy gloves. Hey Will where did you get those gloves? We, we don't get them here in Italy. Yeah, I think I think I stole those. Those are uh, gardening gloves, so they're pretty cheap. You get them at the hardware store. They're nice and grippy. Throw them out. You should try but a pair. I, I have to say that beside the glass, it's a it's a perfect picture from the stern. And talking about healing, uh, this is uh, the right amount of healing that you would need on a jet for uh, when upwind. Uh, this is the max amount of healing that you would uh, have on a JT4 upwind more than this. So um, I think this is a good example of how you should sail a JT24 in heavy wind uh, one upwind. And yeah, Will is uh, with the, the butt all the way to windward and the crew is steering. And again, uh, uh, I also focus about the traveler position because uh, most of the sailors are afraid to kick the traveler to windward when it's uh, medium heavy with air. Uh, but actually, that's the key uh, not to lose the mainsail. If you lose the mainsail, if the, the mainsail uh, gets too much backwind, it's lost uh, because of the drag of the Genoa, that's very bad for your VNG. And pulling the traveler up uh, a car length or two car lengths, uh, it's the key to keep the mainsail full, keep a good VMG, have some bite on the helm. So don't be afraid to sail uh, with the car, uh, with the traveler to windward, even in a medium heavy breeze. Do you agree with like you guys? Oh yeah, for sure. And and um, you know, I do the same. We we never put the traveler down in really any condition with either the blade or the jib. We don't put it below. I'm sorry, the blade or the geno. We don't put it below center. But um, even but with the geno, we don't we we don't quite even get to center because there's just so much sail down there at the bottom of the genoa. Um, so yeah, I agree with you, Andrea. You know. Um, I think this is about the right amount of heel. Look how straight this tailor is in the boat. Maybe he's even pushing it here, right here. He's probably steering up just a little bit, maybe in a puff, or maybe he saw a flat spot or threw a wave or well, something, but, right? Yeah. And uh, Sorry so, to, to jump in, Mike, but yeah, go ahead. that's a pretty high tiller to me. I'm, I'm used to sail with the, when I can, when I can prepare my boat, I like to sail with a lower tiller. And uh, I'm talking about heavy weather. Uh, I do remember that uh, also tightening tiller and rudder is very important because uh, you, you don't want to sail uh, in this condition with the loose tiller that is bouncing around when uh, when tacking. You get what I mean? Yeah, right. You want you want all, that all these can all these pieces of your tiller to be mm -hmm. nice and tight, like the. Uh, you know, you look at the, you know, the tiller, these bolts here should be tightened up. And then you want to make sure your pintles and gudgeons are nice and tight too. 
So if they're really loose, you might need to replace them or something like that. But Will, um, why, why do you sell with such a high tiller? Well, that, that's a Carl's Boat Shop tiller and it's designed uh, to be that high. And, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, I get used to it upwind, um, you know, so I'm, I'm happy with the angle upwind. But the, the real uh, trade-off or the real payoff, excuse me, is for downwind in the waves. Um, you know, when it's windy and you got the spinnaker up and you're going downwind, uh, it's at the perfect height. I usually don't use the tiller extension when it's windy and I just put my hand on the end of the tiller and I guide the boat where I need to guide it and it's just much smoother and the boat's in, in better control. I think what you're saying is since you're sitting in the cockpit with your feet on the floor, when you if you have to pull the tiller really hard, you'd like it to go over your knees, right? You don't want to be, if you have to do a really fast turn, right? And freeze. Exactly, exactly. And I, I'm with you guys. You got to, you know, make sure you maintain your your um, your rudder hardware, the nice tight tiller, and um, you know the, the the gudgeons and the pintles. Everything's nice and tight and serviced. And I don't know if either of you guys have ever broken a rudder, but I, I have once in a pretty windy uh, race in Annapolis, and it was pretty hard to get in without a rudder. So I don't advise it. Cool. Well, let's, uh, this is kind of talking about balance and, um, you know, whether we're sailing the Gemma, Jib, Genoa or the jib, we really want to be balanced. And, uh, and how do we do that with the big old Genoa upwind is what we're going to really talk about next, how to trim it and all that. So, Will, this is also you from behind. Um, you know, it's a little windier clearly here and there's some nice waves. Uh, you know, you're, you're still you got your main breaking a little bit, your Genoa out. And even though it looks really windy to me, you're still doing a really nice job of keeping that boat balanced. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're thinking here while you're driving. You remember this day? Yeah, I was in Newport, um, you know, a few years ago outside Block Island Sound, um, you know, nice windy day. And uh, this, this is a nice shot. It's, it's clearly the upper uh, end of the Genoa. We're, we're probably thinking, we're probably having the discussion between Blade and, and Genoa on our boat. And uh, we've probably decided to stick with the Genoa because of the wave state. Um, I find with the, with the wave state, um, you know, the bigger it gets, the, the higher you take the Genoa into the wind range. And, uh, but at any rate, so we're, we're pretty eased. We've got the, the Genoa sheet um, eased and the, and the sails uh, off the spreader, at least a foot there. And, uh, and then if you look at the foot of the sail, we're out uh, quite far on the foots over the, or, or, or definitely hard on the forward stanchion. So, um, you know, back stays fully on, everyone's fully hiked. And uh, I'm just, you know, basically steering, uh, uh, pushing the helm and the onset of the, the puff and, and easing the sheets uh, on, enough to keep the boat flat in the, in the puff and as the puff rolls by and we're trimming the sails back in and we're, uh, we're definitely talking, uh, the trimmer and I, I think that's Rich Bowen there. And, uh, you know, he and I are having a discussion about uh, easing and, and uh, you know, and the flatter the water is, the, the longer I keep the gentle in, as I mentioned before, and, and, I, and I really work at keeping the boat flat by pushing the helm and putting the bow up, uh, pinching as they call it. Um, and but, but the clearly, rule of thumb, clear. go ahead, Will. Yeah. Yeah. The, the rule of thumb I have with, with, uh, Rich is, um, you know, if he hears the main start to break up for more than three, four seconds, he needs to really use the, the Genoa and nine times a 10, you know, I'm, I'm telling him, you know, he, we have, we've been sailing together for years and, and, uh, there's a good back and forth on it. And, he does the easing and I do the trimming on until it gets really, really windy and it's, you know, fast puffs, big lulls and, and it's better to have him run the handle too. But that's, you know, only, a, only a couple scenarios. Now look how easy the Genoa is here. And, um, you know, there's sort is there sort of a maximum amount you want to ease it? I know you look a lot at that lured sta uh, stanchion, Andrea. So what are you looking for and how much to ease that Genoa? Well, for sure, this is a good picture of uh, 
of the gene was sitting at, the, at this eye range. And so for sure, when you are sitting in those, in those conditions with the Genoa, you actually have to ease the, the Genoa sheet. Maybe you have to move the lid uh, forward too. And for me, I have two referiments, two visuals that really help me to match the sales at, it, at, it, at its best. Uh, one, it's, uh, I do check that the, the foot of the Genoa is actually uh, touching the leeward, uh, the leeward tensions. So that tells me that uh, really the, the gym is not over trim. It's touching there. I see the tension and it's a good sign that I'm easy enough. And above all, uh, I do rely on, on my main cell. So my main cell is actually telling me about the overlap of the two cells. So if the main cell is uh, flapping too much, it's, it's flapping 100%. If the main cell is uh, completely lost, uh, I will uh, ask my trimmer to use a bit of Genoa to open the gate. Uh, if I'm very easy uh, with, the, with the main cell, if I fully trim, uh, if the main cell is not, um, is not uh, flapping at all, then I can uh, sheet in and, and ask to trim in at the Genoa. So uh, have a look to your main cell, where, where you are with your main cell. If your main cell has to be marginal, and don't be afraid that uh, the genoa, the lower part, the foot of the genoa is actually tanchi, uh, touching the tension because you are in the high range of the genoa and you have to ease, you cannot go 100% uh, trim it in. Do that make yeah. sense with you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah I... for sure. I think, I think um, anything you can, anything you have to do um, to keep the boat flat is, is key. And, and a lot of times that's easing the sheets a lot further than you think and then right back in. Uh, there have been a couple of questions come through and um, one was a question on uh, Genoa car location. Um, uh, Joe from Sable asked that. Um, you want to take that, Mike? Where, where you might yeah. set your Genoa cars and, and uh, where you might go through the range? Yeah, so my, my always my go-to spot on the Genoa cars is uh, when I over-trim the Genoa, it's touch-touch. I touch the bottom and the top at the same time, the spreaders and the stanchion. And, of course, I wouldn't sail that tightly trim, but it just gives me an idea where the leads are to start with. And then, you know, if it gets a, if it's flat water, I can feel like I can pull them back a little bit and get the bottom of the Genoa flat. And if I need power, I, I move them forward a little bit. And it's not much, it's just a hole or two max difference either way. Um, but then as it gets windier, you might consider moving them back a little bit uh, to twist open the Genoa. But one interesting thing about the J24 is when you ease the Genoa, the bottom gets so full and the twist so much that um, it actually twists too much sometimes compared to how full the bottom is. So sometimes we just leave them right at that touch touch, even though it's super windy because it twists open so quickly. And I think Andrea, you said you even move forward a little sometimes, right? Yeah, um, you are correct. So when, uh, when you end up with uh, being in the upper range of the Genoa and you tend to sail with the Genoa pretty ease, then maybe I do a fine tuning and I, I move the Genoa cars uh, one, one hole or two holes forward because uh, you don't want to lose the, the twist, you don't want to lose the top part of the sail. Uh, you you want to keep a proper amount of twist in the Genoa, so uh, moving forward the, the car track in every wind, uh, it, it's a move. Yeah, it keeps it from twisting too much. You know, just go, going tr backtracking just a little bit to that, the breaking main here and what we're looking for, um, you know, this back wind here, that tells me I think everything I need to know about the Genoa trim. If I, if I see it breaking too much, like here, I'd be just probably getting ready to ease it just a little bit. And then maybe if I got a lull and I'd pull it back in, but there's a backwind on the main that tells me that. And I like to see a little bit of bubble in this stuff. Not too much. 
Um, but as the bubble goes away, then my Jenna was two E's. So that's how I know whether to trim it in or out. Um, very different than lighter air when I'm trimming it to how far off the spreader tip it is. We're trimming, we're always looking at the main and how much bubble there is there. Yep, Mike, we had one other question come in from uh, Tom Nicoli, and uh, he was asking, you know, if you had a, an amateur level helm and trimmer, um, what, you know, what feedback should the two of them be giving? I know I covered a little bit of this earlier, but do you want to you want to give us your thoughts on that? Just the back and forth between uh, trimmer and 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 uh, helms person. Yeah, um, we have a constant conversation going on. Um, I'm always giving the trimmer feedback on how the boat feels. Like if it feels a little bound up or too healed, a little too much helm. You know, the trimmer kind of knows that maybe they should be thinking about easing or easing and giving that a try. And uh, at the same time, you know, the trimmer's always sort of telling me how they feel about their trim. Like, hey, I just brought it in a little, or I just eased a little. What do you think of that? Or he'd look up and say, hey, there's, um, there's a lot of bubble in the main. Should I ease? Uh, so we're just looking at all these indicators. The, the indicator of the, the backwind is sort of telling us so much about how much trim to do. And... Um, and then the heel is telling us everything too. So I have the trimmer looking a lot at that bubble and telling me what they think. And I'm telling them a lot about my helm. Yeah. I, had, I had one other question come in from Erica Spencer. And uh, that was, uh, uh, would, would you be healing more if it was really nuking top end of the rig, 22, 28 knots? And, uh, you know, the answer really is uh, no. Anything you can do to, to be flattened. And uh, I don't know what you'd call that angle there. That's probably as mo much yield as you'd want to ever be. And that's probably 10 degrees would be my guess. What, what do you think, Mike or Andrea? Well, I think that, I think that's about 10 degrees. Yeah, I think uh, it's no more than 10 degrees. Uh, so again, uh, uh, Modern boat these days, both they all have uh, BPPs that they tell you to sail uh, in heavy wind with the 20, 25 degrees. Uh, but the J24, it's it's not the design. It's uh, it's a different boat has a lot of uh, stability shape. It's pretty flat in the bottom and doesn't have a huge and, and deep keel. So I wouldn't sail more than 10 degrees, but it's hard to say. Basically, I I try also to follow the bite I have on the rudder, and that's that's the the bigger thing I I focus on. I I try not to have a, a bite on the rudder, and many times I'm actually pushing the rudder and pushing the tiller in order to keep the boat flat. Gotcha. Couple more questions coming in. We should just hit right now. Um, Dave Constance says, uh, "How much vang tension are you are we applying there, and and uh, how much would you apply when it's when it's really windy out?" You want to take that one, Mike? Yeah, I think uh, this is really windy. I think um, I'd be pretty much as hard as we could pull the the vang. I'd see um, pull it hard enough that there's a little bit of bend in the boom, and we do that for a couple reasons. It's helping bend the mast a little, but it also keeps the main from twisting too much when we use the main sheet. So you get a little gust and you got to pop the main sheet out. I don't want to just lose the whole sail and um, allows me to trim pretty hard and then be able to ease off without spilling the whole top of the main. So I think once it gets this windy, I, I don't know about you um, guys, but I, I'd just be max on the vang at this point. Yeah, we, we would, uh, you know, two, two people on it, pull as hard as you can, um, you know, before you break the boom. Just, just shy of that. Yep, yep, we do that. Any other questions? Because we do have another Genoa shot from the side, Will. Do you want to keep moving on to that? Yeah, yeah. We got one other question when, once we get in there. Yeah, okay. So looking at it from the side here, here's um, just a little less wind than that last video. And um, what you'll see here is that we have, um, in that last shot, rather, this is the video, but in this shot, 
Um, it's a little less wavy, a little less windy, but it's still the upper end of the Genoa. And there's a lot of good things here we're going to go talk about. But maybe this is a good time to ask those questions, though, Will? Yeah. Um, Alex was asking about uh, the trade-off between backstay and main sheet tension and traveler position. So I don't know. You want to take that one, uh, Andrea? Oh, well, um, I would say that uh, uh, for sure uh, the main factor, the main variable is the main sheet tension. Uh, so I personally do move the, the traveler very little, something between the middle and maybe one or two car lengths to windward. So that's a small range of adjustments. Uh, and it's a, a fine adjustment, it's a fine tuning, but uh, when you get hit by a big wave, or when, you, or when a gas is coming, I actually act I actually act on the main sheet. Uh, it's uh, the biggest uh, thing that you can do in order to keep the boat uh, flat uh, and depower the boat. So I would say 70% focus on the main sheet and 20, 30% focus on the, uh, on the traveler. I hope I did a uh, reply. Yeah, I think to add to that, you know, I think as it gets windier and windier, you're getting the back stay on. Your your quickest change is always the main sheet, you know, a, a, so such a big power tool. And then uh, the traveler, I, I don't know about you guys, but what I do is I don't move that a lot. I sort of set it for the wind trend, and then I leave it for a while, and then if something changes, I'll move it a little bit. But for the most part, you know, I'll put this traveler down to, say, center a little bit above, and and then I'll switch to main sheet. And then in this case, you know, Will's not playing the backstay because they're already at the top end of the Genoa and um, it's already maximum on. But if it were a little less wind, I, I would be trying to mix in the main sheet and the traveler together whenever I could. If I could catch a, a puff with the traveler or, you know, ease it in a lull for the with the traveler, I will. Um, but the quicker change is always the, the main sheet and then maybe I adjust for the traveler and I only adjust the, I'm sorry, for the backstay. Um, and then I only adjust the traveler when there's a really big change. So here we are uh, looking to lured here. So uh, it'd be kind of cool to see some of the things from a different angle. Um, you know, one thing I see here is, you know, we were just talking about main sheet and traveler. Clearly, Will's playing a lot of main sheet here. He's not touching the travel, or he's not touching the backstay. Um, and he's doing that steer straight thing. You can tell because for the most part, he's got that tiller just resting on the deck here, right? Like his um, his hands there on the deck and trying not to steer. What are you thinking right now, Will? Yeah, no, I, you know, I try not to steer and, and uh, you know, I put the tiller extension hard on the deck. Uh, if you if you went over and inspected it uh, at the dock, you'd, you'd see that it's, it's pretty worn from sliding it back and forth on the uh, on the non skid of the of the deck there. But uh, yeah, I try to lock it in and I'm, I'm doing everything with the, the main until that's not enough. And then I start using the Genoa. I, yeah, I remember th this day was again out in Newport. And uh, you know, it's the sea breeze is just coming in. I wouldn't call it upper wind way, upper range of the Genoa. Um, it's probably just in the, you know, it's above the above medium, and we're just starting to see uh, white caps. And um, you know, we're probably, you know, we're using the Genoa sheet a little bit, but not as much as that picture before. And uh, we're not thinking about switching to the blade by any means. But uh, yeah, I. Um, uh, I, I like this photo. I like the crew positioning. There was a question about crew positioning uh, a little earlier. And, uh, you know, it, with the waves building, we've got uh, everyone back uh, and all the way together surrounded that aft stanchion, which is a pretty good spot on the J24. Only time we really go forward to that is lighter air, flat water. 
uh, once we, you know, once the breeze builds and you get any sort of chop, we, we move back there. So, with your uh, uh, trimmer facing out like that, Will, um, you're doing the. If you do need to bring in the Genoa, he's easing it, and then when you need to bring it in, you're doing that, right? Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm operating the main sheet and the winch handle, and Rich uh, in the North Sail shirt there is. Um, is uh, doing the ease and he and I are talking back and forth. I, you know, I might say to him, ease, ease a little bit and then I'll trim on when I want to. And, um, you know, I think in, you know, in, in the early, um, you know, onset of the building breeze, I, like I said, I try to do most of it with the main sheet and then, you know, steer and the steering up the pushing of the helm. And then there gets, to a point where that's not enough. And then that's when I start using the, the, the head sole sheet as well. Right. Andrea, what do you see here that, that you want to talk about? Well, um, again, it's another uh, view. It's a great view from, from Leeward. And it's another good example of how you should sail a J24 up in the, when medium heavy. So, Good on you, Will. Uh, what I really like is that uh, actually Will is, 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 is pushing the rudder every now and then in order to keep the boat uh, flat. And the Genoa is it's actually easy, it's touching the tension. The, but uh, what we can see at the very end of the video is that the, the Genoa, the Genoa is bubbling, so Will is, is pointing uh, onto the wind, and and that's the, the only way, that's the technique to, to sail uh, the J24 uh, in the wind. You have to point uh, some sometimes to keep the boat flat. So don't be afraid to to point your Genoa. We we do sail uh, Genoa very little lately because all the boats just have jibs, but when you are still, uh, when you're racing with the J24 with the big Gemma, don't be afraid to to point to have a big bubble uh, in your laugh when it's uh, medium heavy wind. And beside that, I would say that uh, I really like uh, the, the trimmer, the trimmer uh, position because he's actually fully hacking, but he's also really standing by, he's, uh, he's ready, maybe he's listening to the tactician calls or he's listening to his uh, helmsman about the path and he's ready, he's ready to use the, the Genoa sheet, uh, but the handle is ready there, so eventually the, the trimmer from the rail is using the Genoa, uh, but the handle is already there for the helmsman to recover uh, when the gust is coming or when the Genoa is to ease. So, for sure, uh, this picture show a great technique. So, I do like to grind myself in my hand. Uh, how do you guys do? You you do by your own or you you? you ask the help uh, of the grinder. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely do my own. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, that doesn't work for everyone. So whatever you got to do, something, you know, a lot of boats, uh, the trimmer will do the handle, all, you know, through the, the full wind range and that's fine too. It's, it's really finding a balance that works between the, 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 the skipper and the, and the head sole trimmer that allows you to play the, the sheets as you should. We did have a, a question come in um, about Lopez blocks, and I'll, I'll take this one. Uh, Zach mentioned that he's, he noticed on our Genoa block here, I don't know if you can circle it, Mike, that um, we, we don't have the Lopez blocks. And I don't know if, I assume everyone knows what Lopez uh, blocks are, but they're, they're basically a slightly uh, smaller uh, 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 block. It's a 57 instead of a 75 like that is, a ratchetmatic, and then it's got a cleat on it and what you do is you trim the sail in and then cleat it and then take it across to the winch. And uh, we, we don't use those. Um, you know, I find that uh, 
um, you know, uh, if you, you know, we tack the, you know, we tack the Genoa in a, in a way that we don't need them. And uh, we call it the Newport Rodeo and you're in the cockpit a little bit. And, and uh, it's basically a, a dance that uh, doesn't come naturally right away, but once you practice it a few times, and there's some videos online and I'd be happy to talk anyone through it. Just email me anytime or, or call me or Skype me or whatever. But uh, so we, we do the Newport Rodeo. We don't need the cleats and, you know, the cleats work for a lot of people. I don't necessarily, you know, love them because you cleat the sail in and then you take it over and then you trim it on the winch and the whole Genoa pops out of the block. And uh, I just think that disrupts the flow and it's just not a, a smooth transition. So um, I'm not a fan of them, but I know plenty of people that use them and, and win regattas with them. So um, I'd say one or the other. What, what about you, Mike? Do you use uh, you know, I, I use whatever my trimmer, I use whatever my trimmer wants to use, um, <laughs> you know, whatever they're comfortable with. I've sat with Paul Abdullah a bunch, and he loves using the Lopez box. He does a great job with it. I don't even notice that little pop. He's kind of got that down. Um, but I would say whichever you use, you got to get really used to it. Um, there is that pop off when you get it off, and I don't like that if it's not done well. But also, um, you know, suppose you're, you got to tack twice, you got to tack back in a instant didn't know it you know you got in trouble or something and uh, and that thing doesn't come uncleated that can be a disaster as a backwind so if you're going to use the lopez blocks i'd recommend you get really good at figuring out how to get out of the cleat quickly and so something doesn't go wrong failure mode's bad if you don't get that figured out yeah the only thing i'd add is with the newport rodeo it's nice because you know that you sail with short sheets so that when the the sails trimmed in on one side the old um the, the unused sheet on the, on the weather side, the knots right at the, the block. And if you get the dance down just right, the distance from the block around the winch and, and sitting back down the leeward, the general comes in right inside the lifeline. So it's a perfect place to steer out of the tack to, and that way you build speed a little faster. But there, there are a lot of great questions coming in, and uh, I'm not sure we'll be able to we're starting to get lead on time. I'm not sure we'll, we'll be able to answer them all. Any, any of them that we, we miss, we'll reply back uh, once we're offline, but uh, keep them coming till then, please. Um, Perfect. One other thing on this that we did not talk about was, was Genoa Halyard, right? And uh, towards the upper wind range of the, the Genoa, you need a lot of Halyard on to, to make the sail flat and get the, the proper twist. Uh, to get up wind um, at best BMG. And, uh, you know, a lot of times before the start, we'll sail dead down wind uh, when we raise the head sole and we'll put two people on it. We'll pull as hard as we possibly can and, and then pull the back stay on and go up wind. So I don't know, is that, that what you do on your boat too, Mike? Yeah, we did exactly the same thing. Uh, pop the back stay off, head down wind, get the, the rig kind of leaned forward to make it a lot easier. Uh, it's a hard enough job on the bow anyway without having to make that extra. You know, there's some other techniques like wrapping it around the uh, the spinnaker pole eye and doing a little bow and arrow there. That helps too, but nothing like heading downwind before the start. Hey, one thought on that is um, if you're coming into the leeward mark and the Genoa's not up yet, don't put your backstay on in heavy air until you until they see the Genoa up. A lot of times I you know, I forget and I sometimes have to put the, the backstay on just a little bit early and we can't get enough halyard tension then. So, um, well, uh, so moving on to the blade here, uh, you know, Andrea, I'd like you to take a look at this and and um, tell us what you see. This is uh, once again back to your your favorite spot back in Garda. It's kind of cool, um, but you know, same thing. We're trying to keep it flat, and in this case, you know, we have the uh, the blade up and uh, we're trying to make lots of things happen to keep the boat going. What do you see there, Andrea? Oh, well, this is uh, a great video from, uh, I can't remember that day, it was a practice day, a uh, morning session before the world a couple of years ago in Garda, and definitely was uh, one of those days uh, where you don't have that, you have to sail uh, with a jeep, was uh, 20 knots, 
flat water uh, in the lake, choppy, but 20 knots. And yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a nice video. And um, yeah, there is a proper uh, healing, but what I like from uh, this stern view is actually the, the shape and the twist of the jeep. Uh, I think it's very important uh, when you're sailing with the jib to have the leads in the proposition. And I personally, I personally like to sail uh, uh, with a nice uh, round uh, uh, jib in the bottom with uh, with some shape in the foot uh, because. Uh, like that, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, when a gust is coming or when I'm when I'm easing the jib sheet, that uh, my jib don't get over twisted and I don't lose the top of the sail. The jib is a small sail, and and we have to keep uh, keep it all flying. So uh, I'm very afraid to go flat in the bottom of the sail, and I prefer to be maybe. One uh, one hole forward, and some uh, round shape in the bottom, and and keep uh, the twist in control. So uh, it's a nice uh, video, Mike. You were doing very great. Uh, uh, the whole video, I see that you are in control of the mainsail. The the traveler is in the middle. The boom is right in the center. And um, basically, the main is always in control. It's never flapping, so you have the boat is uh, flat. So that's the way to do it. Uh, and yeah, maybe at the very end of the video, you were like a little bit overheated, but uh, maybe you were caught by by a gust. Yeah, uh, I do remember this day. It was a really beautiful day there. And uh, you're right, looking at the video, look here at the end, I, I do heal up too much. And, you know, I went back and I looked at the video, like right there, that's way too much heal. I, and I think this really demonstrates how much concentration it takes. You see here back a few moments before, uh, you see me looking back at the, the boat taking the video. And uh, so you see my head facing backwards. I don't know if you guys can all see that on the screen, but take my concentration off just for a second, and I sure paid the price later. Just a few I, seconds. I remember. Later. I remember the day there was there was a nice lady on the reef. I'm sure. Yeah, that must have been it, Andrea. That must have been it. You know, one other thing in this video, Andrea, is um, you know, look at the twist of the jib. I, you like to put marks on there, right? on your spreader yeah you are you are correct uh, mike is a good question uh, uh i have to say that uh, uh i like to put marks uh both uh on the jig sheet uh, if i can uh and on the spreader but uh, as we know on the jig sheet you you might put them one day, the next day you don't find them. They are, but when you put marks on the spreaders, they are all, always there. Uh, maybe on the J24, since we are always, uh, most of the time we are sailing with the Genoa, with the overlapping Genoa, we tend to forget to put the uh, spreader on the marks. But then, uh, when it's time of the jib, uh, if you put the spreader on the marks, you, you'll find some uh, referiment there, and they are always useful. So don't forget, put your marks on the spreader. It will be helpful uh, in the rough days, and you can see them from the visual, uh, from the visual uh, window of the mainsail, and uh, I really find them uh, helpful to know where you are with your twist uh, uh, and how you're doing with your forcing. Kind of like the the Genoa, you know, you see here that we have a little bit of twist in the main and kind of a matching twist in the jib. We're trying to keep that slot kind of even. 
And uh, if you had the Genoa a little tight, jib a little tighter with the main twisted, that wouldn't have worked and vice versa. So um, with that, we're going to go to the next slide where we're going to look at um, from a different view of the jib. And, um, you know, I think this is in Poland. Um, I'm sorry, Germany, when we did the uh, Boltenhagen Worlds there. Uh, so this is us, this is me, and I got, um, you know, Will's here. Uh, by the way, you're hiking really nicely there, Will. You must have, uh, I bet you saw the camera, right? <laughs> no, I didn't see the camera. <laughs> yeah, you hike hard, you hike hard. But, <laughs> but uh, hike hard. there was a lot here, and, um, you know, you can see the jib is eased in this picture. And, uh, and, you know, I think just like the Genoa, the way we know how much to ease is by looking at this bubble in front of the, in front of the main. Um, this might be a little on the high end amount of bubble. I like to just see a little bit of it. So maybe the, you know, maybe I'm saying to Max or Trimmer right there, hey, crack the jib just a little bit. And, um, you know, so that's kind of what we're looking at. What do you see in this picture, Will? Yeah, well, I like, um, you know, everyone's hiking real hard. And, and what I, you know, I noticed that, uh, you know, you and Max, Max has turned around and, and uh, it's an upper, you know, it's, it's windy there. I remember that day and it was, we were in the blade all day and it was nice and shifty and, and uh, just breathe, breeze on every, you know, the whole day. And, uh, you know, so you guys are talking about, um, you know, easing the jib, when to ease the jib and you can see, you know, you pointed out the, the main starting to break up there because you're, you know, you're easing it and you're probably talking to Max uh, about uh, easing the sheet and it's all in unison. So, you know, you're, you're both easy, you're using both sheets at the same time and then you're trimming them back in when you can, when the boat can take it. Um, the other thing I see is that the jib hired looks nice and firm, nice and tight. You probably went downwind and, and, uh, Ease the back stay off all the way off. Put two people on the halyard and and uh, and then went back up wind. And the sails nice. Looks you know from this angle, which is hard to tell, but it, it looks nice and and uh, and flat and perfect for yeah. the the conditions. Yeah, we have those overbend wrinkles again, and that tells us that there's quite a bit of back stay on. So you know we maybe could go a little more back stay, but we're getting close to the maximum amount, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, question. Cool. Yeah, question for you. Do you, you ever um, go a little looser on the shrouds with the blade? That crossover between the Genoa and the and the blade. Do you ever find, do you ever just go like right from the the Genoa to the blade and leave the shrouds the same, or do you ever find yourself going a little looser in certain certain conditions if you transition to the jib a little early? Yeah, well, we were looking at this photo. We, we had actually chosen it because we liked the jib halyard and a little bit of backwind and hiking hard and all that. And then we noticed that the lured shroud was loose. And um, so that's related to what you're asking. Well, we, um, you know, right now we'd consider probably would have wanted to gone up on the rig. So either, you know, the wind picked up from the start and we, uh, we got kind of caught out of range a little too loose. Or maybe it was a little up and down, and this was a big puff. And um, but either way, you know, a lured shroud that loose um, was probably too much. We'd want to go on the rig if we had the choice. But to answer your question, yeah, I think at the lower end of the blade, you don't want to go too tight, uh, especially if you know you're maybe you're putting it up in flat water, you were tacking a lot, and maybe it was only 16 knots. You wouldn't want to crank the rig too much. So I might, you know, maybe it was blowing 14 and. You had the Geno up and you decide to switch to the Jenny, I mean, sorry, to the blade, I might consider just not going up on the rig at that point. Do you yeah. do the same, Andrea? Oh, well, um, yeah. Um, we don't want to sit with the leeward shout uh, sagging for sure. So I'm also very careful when I'm sitting in any wind if I see if I see the leeward uh, shroud that is sagging, for me, it's, uh, it's the sign that I'm to lose, uh, to lose with the, with the tuning. Uh, so, so maybe I'm a step or to step down. So that's, uh, that's an important thing to bear in mind. And watching this uh, picture from this uh, point of view, 
actually reminds me that um, Jeep it's uh, strongly affecting the, the twist of the Jeep. So you always have to double check to have uh, a tight uh, Jeep Elliard because if you, leave, if you lose tension, uh, that will affect uh, heavily the twist of, uh, of your Jeep. So always uh, be careful and double check your uh, Jeep Elliard tension. Yeah, it does bring up a good point is, um, you know, we we're just thinking back at the shroud again was, um, you know, in any condition, that's sort of our sanity check on the shrouds. If, if the uppers, the caps are loose, we're probably a little too loose on this. You go up one notch and if, our, if we get on a lure and you feel it and it's super tight, you probably want to go down on your rig. So the tuning guide always says, hey, six to nine. 10 to 13 or whatever. That's just your first guess. You got to go sailing up wind and check. So cool. Well, there's another condition beyond this and uh, that's the really extreme condition. So um, I got a great photo here of Andreas sailing. And I first saw this photo. I'm like, Hey, Andreas, you're going back to the dock too windy for you, huh? <laughs> but, uh, but he's, but he's not. He's uh, this is a he had a successful day racing. This is his VMG mode up win in an extreme condition. So tell us what is going through your head that day, Andrea. Oh well, um, that is a picture of um, a very very windy day. That was uh, an Italian national a few years ago. Um, I clearly remember the day because uh, I have to say it was uh, 25 plus, 25 knots. was definitely a day where you hoist the jeep. And, but beside that, uh, was really, uh, there was really big swell and big waves. And that makes the difference of the way you, you're going to save and you're going to trim uh, your sails because when you have this big sea, uh, then is the time for you to ease the sails, to ease the jeep, to ease the main, and uh, you start that mode uh, of sailing uh, high and pointing high, and you start to try to sail uh, the fast BMG. You start to try low and fast, and um, and. Uh, uh, you, 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 the only things you can do is to use the sails and, and go for the fast mode. If you try to point uh, high and keep the sails tight, you'll hit every single uh, wave and you'll be a slow boat. So uh, when, it, when it gets rough, when it really gets rough with big waves, uh, open your sails, and try to sail fast and low, uh, keep the boat flat and smooth. Uh, don't be afraid to go for the fast VNG. And beside that, uh, I would point out that in this condition, uh, maybe you need your uh, your trimmer, your tailor to turn around, leave the, the, the rail and properly trim the, the, the jeep sheet uh, as in this picture. So do you guys do the same? Do you... Do you sail with the, with the tail inside any now and then when it's really wild and uh, rough? Yeah, you can't. Uh, you really can't point up and when it's rough, and and um, you definitely have to have your. We have our Genoa trimmer face in if it gets strange. You know, if it's either crazy like this, and the other condition is when even when it's flat water, if it's super puffy. Any time that the, the Genoa trimmer has to be letting out lots of Genoa and then bringing it right back in, if I can't keep up with that with a handle, um, which isn't doesn't take very much, it's hard to do, right? Um, if I'm playing the main a lot, or, um, then I definitely want the Genoa trimmer. It's more important to have the Genoa right than have all that absolute weight out. I'd do it pretty different if it was flat water, uh, the Genoa trimmer facing out to get maximum weight and it sure would look different wouldn't it the sails would be in and and all that so how about you will yeah i think there's a point when uh you know when you're straight lining and you're not tacking uh 
very often you you want everyone hiking out and and you can you can manage the handle yourself but like you said when it's super shifty up and down it, it's way more effective to have the sails trim just right so uh, having the trimmer turn around or so that they can you know do the ease and the trim really makes the difference i think only thing i see uh, on this photo uh, besides the fact that i might be yelling at my crew to hike harder is uh is that uh you know there there looks like there's a fair amount of uh uh head stay sag there and um you know i might be thinking about you know it's the wind super windy conditions you know i'm sailing with the sheets really eased the, you know, especially the main sheet um to keep the boat flat and going up wind so i, I might be thinking about you know needing a little more head stay tension having a firmer head stay and I'd probably be thinking about pushing the mass butt forward to, you know, half inch, three quarters of an inch to, to help me do that. Yeah. How, how about you, uh, Mike? Uh, go ahead, Andre, what were you saying? Well, uh, yeah, uh, th that's a good point, Will. Um, I actually can't remember, I was doing that day in this picture with the foot mass position, but uh, for sure, you said the right thing. Uh, when when it's rough, when it's uh, windy, really windy, uh, and you're sitting with the jib, uh, uh, it's time to move the mass pad forward, and that's the uh, the the only way to get rid of the sag uh, to to go and sit with the minimal sag. You don't need the sag uh, in this condition. You have plenty of power. You are overloaded, so for sure in this picture, uh, I'm too loose with the sag. I should have gone uh, uh, more uh, mass forward. Good point. But Andrea, you may you may be really tight on your rig. At some point, if it's blowing that hard, you're just going to have some jib sag also. Especially since, you know, I think this does show that if this was flat water. And you were sheeting hard in the main. The main has a big effect on the force stay tension, also. So I think you probably would have a much tighter force stay if you weren't reaching off like this, um, which you have to do. So, you know, I think there is a limit once you get to the top end. You get to that, you know, top range of your shrouds and your mass butts forward. That's pretty much all you can do with your force stay, and then you have to do the rest. Anything else you need to do in a condition like this, you're already doing it. You're letting the sails out. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah, a cu couple questions just before we end here. It looks like everyone's still engaged. Uh, still got a bunch of people on the call. So let's let's go back and um, just hit a couple of the last little questions here. Uh, George had a question about the traveler and uh, whether we ever go below uh, the center. If you ever use it all the way down, and this might be the scenario where you might think about doing that. Uh, would you, Andrea? Have, would you ever go lower than? Than center line on the traveler. I would I would say no. I would say no. Um, as we know, we go all the way up when it's light, but this is not the topic uh, of this webinar. When it's medium heavy, I go between the middle and a couple of uh, car lengths to windward. So. I never, never go any uh, leeward with a with a with a traveler because uh, if I do that, I completely uh, lose control uh, of the mainsail. The, the mainsail would be flapping, uh, would get caught by the backing of the jema or of the jib. So my answer is never sail below the center of the traveler position. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with that. One last question here from Marty. I'm, I'm going to give it to Mike, and it's about Cunningham, uh, uh, Genoa Jib Cunningham. And uh, you know, when do you use it? Would you use it in heavy air, or do you, or do you uh, preference uh, getting max halyard on the on the on the gross halyard? You know, I think if it's windy enough, like in this picture in the upper end of the Genoa. Um, you're just trying to pull it up as hard as you can, and and uh, if you get that right, then you don't need to put the, the Cunningham on the Genoa or the blade. 
Um, I think where it comes in really handy is when the wind is up and down, probably in a little less wind. Uh, if it's a little bit puffy, it's really nice to put, you know, all the controls on all the sails in a puff and off in a lull. And once you get into the upper end of the Genoa, you're already kind of maxed out. And the only time we'd put it on then is if, if maybe the Genoa Halley was a little too loose. Uh, we'd compensate for that with the, with the uh, Cunningham, the Jib Cunning, Genoa Cunningham. But we'd prefer to get it with halyard in that condition. So my answer to that is it's a, it's a control to use when the wind's up and down or to kind of correct an error if you didn't get it up tight enough around the lured mark or something. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Mike. The only time I ever really use the Cunningham and play it would be in those scenarios where, um, you know, there are big lulls and then there are quick puffs and, you know, you set up the general halyard for the lull and then you pull the, the uh, Cunningham on in the puff and you get it back off for the, uh, for, for the, for the next lull. So. Got it. Cool. Any other questions or should we call it a wrap? I think we should, uh, I think we should call it a wrap. All right, cool. Well, thanks guys. Um, we are going to have some more in the speed series. You know, we're not sure what we're going to have next. So maybe we'll, um, we'll take some input from you all. If you have any requests, uh, you know, we were thinking, uh, maybe heavier downward would be a great subject. And then, you know, there are as courses, you know, light air and medium air. There's a lot of subjects we could cover. So we'd love to hear from you. Also, if we didn't get you your question today, please email us. We're happy to take those emails and uh, talk to you about that. So, uh, so thanks everybody and um, have a good night. Thanks, uh, Will. Uh, good night, Will. Good night, Andrea. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. Fun, Thank fun doing all. this. See you next Have a good one. night, everyone. Ciao. Buenas noches. Buenas noches.